What's up everybody, this is Thibaut from Steam Studio. In today's video, I don't want to talk to you about a tutorial, but a new tool that's coming out and the update of the Steam Redshift like it. Let's jump in. Okay, so we are now into Cinema 4D. Um, yes, it's the Air 21 version, so the plugin work for Air 21 also. So now into Air 21, you have the extension uh, the extension that replaced plugin, so pretty common name for extension actually. If you go to Steam Tools, you have all the new uh, small tools. It's like a you know, it's like a toolbox uh, that I'm using quite a lot, and this this is gonna be updated uh, when I need to you know make a new uh, make a new tool. I'm just updating it. And create a new button and a new button and a new button so this is the stuff that that I create because I think it's uh, it's useful to have those things so let's start with the steam grid switchers so this one just um, you know you can just uh, hide and show the grid very simple uh, the steam new uh, in c4d toggle is um, I think it's a it's a cool one because it gives you the opportunity to uh, disable and enable the new stuff into Cinema 4D. So here, as you can see, uh, all the new thing that you have into Cinema 4D are, are in yellow. And, you know, most of the time you disable it, which is normal. But sometimes you, s you just think, oh, I saw something, but I don't really remember where it is. And you know, I don't want to spend too much time going to my preference and enable it, uh, search for my stuff and said, okay, I find it, edit, preference, disable it. So simple button. Next, you have the Steam Null. So the Steam Null is just a button that create a null. The good thing about it is if you, if you have, for example, here a null and you just click on it, it's going to create a null inside the null. So it's really, really fast and really efficient. Next, you have the Steam Golden Grid toggle. So uh, what is that actually? So if you click on the, uh, uh, if you create a camera and you just uh, enable it, you need to have the camera here selected. And if you double click, it's important, you need to double click on this one to enable it, uh, you will have this thing. Uh, if you don't know what it is, if you go to the camera and you go to the composition, it's enabled the grid, so this one. Um, if, you, if you're like me and made a lot of photos, you should know about this grid. I'm not going to explain this today, but it's a really important one. And sometimes, you know, the golden spiral is useful. So I enable it by default and I choose a color that should be um, should be uh, visible on any situation. The good thing with the Steam Golden uh, Grid toggle here is that if you uh, just push Control and click, is going to invert uh, like this. If you use the Shift button and click, you're going to do this and if you use alt is going to do this and next you can use control and shift to uh, do this so that's it for uh, this uh, uh, new tool for the moment there is four of them and I hope they will be uh, new if I need it uh, so let's go now to the Steam Redshift Light Kit update Okay, the Steam Redshift Light Kit. So, first of all, I would like to explain something to you. Um, for those who have maybe some problem with the TXT, it's because previously you need to point here to have a path that point to an empty folder or where the actual Algeri are. Uh, if you just point to random thing, the 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 plugins gone. Um, the plugin was crashing. So now you can just delete here and the plugin said okay you don't have any hdri okay i just cancel the the tab the uh, hdri tab on the plugin so 
you can you can now uh, just leave it empty if you don't want to use it and if you want to use it remember that into your hdri folder you need to have this kind of folder i mean here i just renamed this jsd uh, folder and i have files and icons which is really really important to have those so in files i have all my hdri and in icons is just a representation in jpeg I don't remember if it's working in PNG, but in JPEG it's working. And I just made, you know, uh, two here is 200 by 100 uh, representation of this one. So you can just use a script into Photoshop to just create this for your own uh, HDRI. So um, let's jump to Cinema 4D to see the new stuff. So we are now into Cinema 4D and the light kit is launched. I'm not going to uh, cover the studio because nothing changed here. You have already know what it is and it doesn't change though. Let's go now to the new tab here, which is light. So here, as you can see, we have, um, we have images, which is interesting, but what is that? So uh, here is, if I just, uh, for example, click into onto this, is going to create uh, and just put it over there uh, is just create a light and that's funny because this um, this function I built it maybe three or one month after uh, the last release of the uh, of the redshift like it so it's really fun because I'm using it, uh, a lot of uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff uh, with this thing and I saw that Grayscale Gorilla also made his own um, images so you can buy their image but here uh, I find the pingo.nu and on his website you can go to the VFX tool and what he did is just uh, he create an HDRI studio lights which is uh, if you open the PDF it's you know different type of light that you can use uh, actually with Redshift for example and um, he created this which is really, uh, really uh, interesting it's just $25 on Gumroad I think and um, you can also download some samples if you want to taste it before uh, before buying it it's actually what I did I downloaded the samples test it build my my own uh, uh, build, build the um, uh, build and change a little bit my script at the time and then it works perfectly so I just buy this and is really really cool and the other thing is caustics and you can do a lot of stuff with the caustics uh, thing here so if I just uh, open the PDF here is just caustics so you can easily fake the caustic effect uh, here which is here that what you can what you see here is completely fake uh, it's not it's nobody <laughs> there is nothing uh, caustic uh, calculation here and it's really really a good uh, solution so um let's go back to cinema 4d so here as you can see i create uh, previously this light and let's see what we have here so it's just creating a light with the uh, with this path and you have the uh, hdri on it and if you just uh, put it visible here just going here if I start the render you have something like this and as you can see is just the light in HDRI that just pushing uh, some uh, some light here so if I just create uh, for example I'm going to use I don't know this one and this one and I'm going to change the light here what is very interesting here is uh, you you can have a lot of different effect as you can see you have a light like this and what is interesting is if you just delete this thing this is the light that you have so yes it's cool but if uh, you use some HDRI like this you're gonna have a really 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 realistic uh, lighting the good thing with this system and the redshift like it is that if you go there and you want to change so here I'm 
this is the samples uh, you can have you can test this with the samples uh, that I previously show you so here I'm going to use for example I don't know this one and if you if your light is selected is going just to replace um, with the good uh, path here so it's really pretty straightforward and if you want to create a new light you just deselect your light and create a new one pretty simple so here we're gonna just cover some of the of this light so for example this one is going to give you a completely different aspect this one of course a blue one is going to give you this and by the way if you want to change the tint of the color here you can just click the tint color and as you can see here it doesn't change nothing it doesn't change because it's white but if you I think if you change this and do something like that you can tint your image which is really really useful if you wanna if you wanna change the color of your image so here we are back to uh, the beginning so yeah this this tool just it's, it's just amazing to use uh, this kind of stuff uh, really cool so I really encourage you to use uh, the Pingo uh, or the uh, Redshift uh, Grayscale Gorilla sorry um, lights uh, it's really important to have those kind of uh, those kind of stuff so now let's try to use the um, some caustics here so if you buy uh, the caustic pack or uh, just a sample to test it it's really really cool so I deselect my light here and I'm going to for example create uh, um, don't know what I can create you know what let's go for this one so I'm creating this one and I'm going to use the um, the spot system this spotlight here the spotlight react with this so the cone is really small so you can you can't see the spot and if I use this and just put it like this what is going to give you for example this is <laughs> this is not making any sense because uh, there is no caustic uh, to have in this scene but it's interesting to see how you can uh, do this kind of stuff so I'm going to do that and I'm going to change the cone angle and with the cone angle I can do something like this for example and if I bring down the intensity as you can see I can have a really really interesting um, interesting effect oh yeah by the way if you change the uh, light type it's not going to change the path so uh, because it's only working with uh, area light so here what you can do as you can see if I'm, I'm just messing around here because I try to do this and no it's not working like this so what you can do uh, is just create a light and copy and paste it here yeah and it's working so as you can see you can have really really interesting effect with this type of um, with this type of light so into the tools here I don't know if you if you already have those I don't think so so I'm going to just show you what I'm doing with those kind of stuff um, I'm coming from more photography and filming on set and stuff so I really like to use uh, what I call here uh, reflector um, reflectors are um, a large piece of uh, of uh, I don't know it can be paper it can be uh, you know I don't know the term in English but it's a big uh, large piece of uh, of sheet like black one or um, or for example white white one or golden um, so what I'm how I'm using it so first let me just delete this one and how I'm using it is for example here uh, yes you can for example put um, you can put here uh, a light to just you know have more light onto um, into this uh, in in this part here of this uh, 
of this object but you know a light uh, is is it's a light is uh, is going to give you the look of a light and sometimes you just need to have a bounce of light and that's where the reflector um, coming into uh, the place so if I just click on this is just creating uh, a white reflector and just let me just create like this and I'm just going to take the reflector here as you can see it's a white one and what is interesting here is that you can use it to just you know bounce bounce the light so if I just move it just behind the camera here and make it like this as you can see we have a little bit of light coming here and of course if you just like in real life it, if you want to adjust the amount of light that bouncing on this card you can just push it a little bit further and as you can see the difference is if I just do this disable it you just make something that it seems to be more natural because if you create a light yeah you will have a light but you will have a shadow and you will have bounce uh, everywhere and stuff and sometimes this is not what you want so I for for yeah for a long time now I'm using these techniques in that like the real life way to to work and yeah of course in some renders renderers is going to be really really uh, difficult to do those time of stuff uh, type of stuff because uh, bouncing like cost you a lot of um, you know it's when you do those things you're using GI uh, so of course if in your setting you just go to the GI here and just disable everything of course you're not going to see this uh, working but if you use um, GI like me on every project I use GI uh, I will have this bounce here of light just coming here from here and bouncing here uh, from this card so it's really a good uh, good solution to use so here I can now create uh, for example a golden one and yeah as you can see you will have this um, golden uh, bounce of light you can of course use the uh, shader graph to change the shader graph or maybe you can just go there and change the color of course and it's going to just change the color so the black one what is that why having a black one and the black one is really useful because sometimes let me just show you how it works I'm going to transfer it to this one here and I'm going to disable this one and yeah the black one here is is going to completely disable your bounce and let's say for example you have this type of shot and you want to go there and in your camera you know that you have for example a long focal here oh yeah let's change the focal here and yeah something like this what is interesting here is if I just disable the um, here the black reflector as you can see you have uh, bounces that coming from the background and sometimes you don't want that you just want to have a black or less bounce onto onto this and a black uh, reflector is going to give you that is going to absorb all the light and you will end it up with less light onto your bounce okay so moving on in the network HDRI um, here I have my Grayscale Gorilla uh, uh, HDRI so pretty pretty neat um, the uh, the thing that changed here if if I just let me just delete all of those things perfect 
this finger and we don't have any light for the moment. So if I'm going to network HDRI, previously when you create an HDRI, for example, let's say this one is creating, for me is going to the network. So that's why it's taking uh, some se uh, a, a few seconds to load. But previously when you click on each HDRI is just uh, creating um, more and more and more HDRI. And sometimes uh, I just feel like it's interesting, yeah, to have two of them and switching really quickly. So, for example, if you have your HDRI, your dome light, sorry, uh, selected here, and you click on anyone, it's going to reload and change your HDRI on the fly. So, for example, if I um, don't know, choose, uh, let's say this one, which is completely different color, and as you can see, you just is is changing the path. Of, uh, of the light like this for example but of course if you want to uh, if you want to have another light another dome light you can just uh, click here deselect everything deselect your light actually if you just select uh, something else it's going to work the same and by clicking it said okay you don't you didn't um, choose a DOM, so I'm going to create a new DOM for you. And it's doing this. So here, if I just continue to click, as you can see, it's just changing the, uh, the light. So I hope you like these new tools and this uh, Steam Redshift Like It updates. If you do, uh, leave me a thumbs up. If you have some questions, if you have some suggestions or some remarks, just leave me comments and I will try to uh, answer to it. Sometimes I don't have any time, but I always try to answer to your question. Um, and uh, see you next time.